Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. So last week I did a video on the lift method of float fishing and if you haven't seen the video I'll put a link just up here um, so you can have a quick look at that one first of all but basically all the lift method is is a float a bit like this which sits down as usual to about there in the water then when you get a bite the bite indicates by doing this lifts right up the lift method. And the way that does it is simply because you have um, a small shot just about that far from the hook and then when the fish picks up the bait the whole thing rises up and you get exactly what I just showed you which is a lift. Now you do need um, floats with some fairly thin antennas like the one I've made here and quite a few people have asked me how to make it. So obviously there's a few people out there that want to give it a go so today's video is going to be exactly that how to make one of these uh, floats for using on lift bites. Um, it's also called an antenna float, sometimes called a wind beater, but basically this is all it is. Now my versions I've made in the usual way, so they come apart and I can change the tips on them, as you see, to different colours. If you just want to make them so that this antenna just goes straight into the float without having the ability to change it, that's fine. You probably just need to make a few more floats with different tip colours. Materials wise, you're going to need some of this 12 millimeter round balsa wood or half inch round balsa wood. That's for these bodies of the floats. Five millimeter round balsa wood, which is for the tips. You're going to need to get some of this fiberglass material. And uh, basically these are reclaimed from broken floats, uh, pole floats. These are the, um, the stem sections where I've just literally um, taken them off the old floats and reusing them. That forms the antenna. You'll need a packet of these uh, bamboo skewers uh, for barbecues. These are the ones which are about two millimeters in diameter. And if you're gonna make the ones with the removable tips and changeable tips, you're gonna to need to get your hands on some of these. These are pastel uh, gel pens. And what you're going to need to do is to take the insides out Remove the metal uh, nib part there and then run it under a tap until you end up with just the hollow tube. And that's what takes part of these bamboo skewers and also forms the, uh, the peg in the bottom. And that's pretty much all you're going to need for this, apart from some paint, obviously. So I think the next thing is let's get on with actually making them for you. The floats I'm going to make today are going to be two triple A's, three triple A's and four triple A's. And so to do that, I've cut these pieces of balsa at 30 millimeters, 40 millimeters and 50 millimeters in length. Now you can do that with a craft knife or a hacksaw. In my case, I'm, I'm lucky I've got a bandsaw. So that's what I've cut them on. The next thing we have to do is to drill holes through the center of the bodies. Now, I'm lucky because I've got this um, homemade float lid which I made up. Of course, you won't have one of these. So in one of my previous videos on float making, I actually did show you how to use a standard battery operated uh, drill screwdriver, which is clamped to the desk and you can use that to drill the holes. And you can also use it to shape them later. I'll just insert that video for you now. Uh, it's only a sort of a minute or two long, but that should help you to get the holes straight all the way through and it'll also help you to, um, to shape the floats, as I say, later on. If you've already seen this video on the, um, the battery screwdriver uh, because you made other floats, uh, feel free to move on to the, uh, the next section of making these floats, and that's at this point here. So the first thing is, don't just take your standard battery operated screwdriver, put a two millimeter drill bit in it, and then try and drill through the center. You will actually end up doing this and it'll come out off centre at the other end. The idea is to try and secure this down to the bench somehow. Now I found the easiest way to secure the uh, battery operated uh, drill screwdriver is just to take a clamp and clamp it in a position so it's parallel to the bench here. Take off the, the battery pack for now and then you'll be putting on either tape or a cable tie or something to hold the trigger in position. Then when you put this back on, it'll start up. 
Now, as you can see, I've also taken a couple of pieces of scrap wood so that they're just fractionally lower than halfway. And what I'm going to do is offer that up. Now, obviously, I'm doing this all backwards here, but the point of the drill goes into the center. And now I can actually gauge roughly where I am in terms of keeping this parallel. So I can take it into the drill then take it back the other way and drill from the other side. Never try and drill all the way through because that's going to mean it comes out slightly offset here. Uh, obviously this is just a piece of scrap, um, but really this will give you quite a good result. As you would have noticed when I was drilling, even with this small one, I drilled one end first, went about halfway through, and then turned it around and went the other way. And as I said in the previous segment, always do that. That way you'll get centralized holes through all of your pieces. If you don't want to have interchangeable tips like I've got, then what you need to do is to only drill the hole from one end. Go about halfway through then take this antenna section find the center and just push it in and then glue it in place. Obviously that means it's fixed, but it's an easier and simpler way to do it than, than my way. Um, of course, the benefit of it mine is that I can change tip colors easily and also lengths if I need to. But if you don't want to go to that uh, length, feel free to just, as I say, put this straight into the, the body of the float itself. If you are going to do the same thing as I do and use the interchangeable tips, you're now going to need this uh, plastic inner tube from the uh, ballpoint pens. These are the ones we emptied out of ink earlier on. Now, the outside of these is really smooth and it doesn't take uh, glue very well at all. So before we start cutting them up, I'm just going to take a piece of 80 grit paper, sandpaper, and just rough up the edges all the way around. You'll know when it's right because instead of being a nice shiny finish, you've got a really dull sheen all the way around. You don't have to go mad on this, it's literally just enough to take that shiny uh, surface away and make sure that the glue sticks to it. That's it. I'm gonna cut the tube into one inch or 25 millimeter sections. It doesn't have to be totally exact. Just use a craft knife and roll it backwards and forwards until it goes through. Do this down the tube until you've got enough sections for the amount of floats you're gonna make. Now take one of the two millimeter barbecue skewers, use the blunt end, not the sharp end. Take one of those sections of plastic tube and insert it into it. Now that's actually a little bit tight. So if you need to, just take the 80 grit sandpaper and just give it a quick rub down. Again, not too much, just enough to make it a sliding sort of a fit inside like that and the final operation on this section is to just cut off the skewers at about 50 millimeters again you can just roll it backwards and forwards don't even have to go all the way through on this one you can just break them off like that these will become shorter eventually but if you make them about 50 millimeters long for now That'll help you when you come to do shaping. So before we glue all these parts into the body of the float itself, we have to glue the bamboo skewer into the plastic tube. And exactly with the outside, we have to rough up the tube. But of course, you can't do that with sandpaper on the inside. So this is just a, a simple safety pin. I bent over the end, and all you do is insert it probably, oh, a good 10 or 12 millimeters inside, and then just twist and pull backwards and you're scoring the inside of the plastic tube as you go as you see here hopefully you can actually see the scoring i'll try and see if we can get this a bit closer for you but can you see the scoring on that 
that just provides the key so that when we glue this inside of here, it will actually stay in there. I've mixed up some two-part epoxy. Uh, this is that uh, quick drying stuff. It's supposed to be about five minutes, but trust me, when it's warm, it goes off a lot quicker. Make sure you get some on the end of your skewer and just push it in to about the halfway point. Don't go any further than that, otherwise you won't be able to get your antenna in. Just wipe off any excess glue and do that for each of them. Make sure you've got plenty on the end there because you want that to be waterproof as well. Just in case. Just wipe off again. Now it's time for a quick cup of coffee while I leave those to dry. I've given it about 20 minutes while I had a cup of coffee and so the glue's dried on these uh, items here. As you can see, these go through the body of the float and come out of the bottom. Now on the bigger floats, we don't have to have much, if anything, sticking out. But on the smaller bodies, as you see from this small one here, we have to have a little bit sticking out, otherwise that 25 millimeter length is gonna come all the way down here. So just be aware of that when you're inserting. To insert it, we have to drill a four millimeter hole into um, the top of the, um, the body. And we'll do that again, in my case, on the float lathe. I've put the four millimeter bit in and I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on just at the approximately the 25 millimeter point to indicate that I should go no deeper than that on any of these drillings. Uh, bear in mind, as I said before, if I'm drilling this small one, which is only this long, I don't want to go all the way in, so I'll probably only go to about there. So that's mine done. Uh, again, you can do the same thing on the um, drill screwdriver uh, mechanism I showed you earlier on. Just make sure that you keep everything as straight and parallel as possible. You don't want anything to be uh, slightly off when you finish the float. Now we've got the four millimeter holes drilled, we can just take um, a long skewer out of the packet and just go through and just push out any residual sort of bits and pieces. And also at this point, you need to make sure you've got a reasonably sliding fit. If it's tight like this, just uh, take the piece of 80 grit sandpaper and just give it a bit of a rub like this until you've just got a fairly smooth fit. Just check it through the small hole first of all and that now goes in quite smoothly. And on this one, through the holes and in it goes. Now, I'm not going to push it all the way in at this point because I've actually still got a little bit of um, curing time on the, the glue. So I'm going to pull it out from this end. But I am now going to glue each of these three into the bodies. Same as before with the glue then. I've mixed up a small amount of the Araldite epoxy. And I'm going to use the barbecue skewer just to smear some on. Just a reasonable way down the stick and also onto the plastic tube. Take it in through the end, the four millimeter end obviously, and just push. Seems to be about it. And just get a piece of tissue just to wipe it off. It's always a good idea to wipe this off because when you're trying to shape the body, it uh, tends to make it difficult to do if it's, got, if it's got glue on. This end, you'll notice I didn't put glue all the way down here and this is now clear. So that's that one done. I'll just finish the other two off and then we'll get on with shaping. The shaping of the body is all going to be done on my float lathe here, uh, but I've also just sanded down the end of one of these longer skewers to insert it in there then when I put it in the chuck, when I turn this on, this can rotate and sometimes it wobbles. So if you've got this 
extra piece in here, you can steady it with your hand like this. See? Again, it isn't too bad, but it does kind of wobble a bit if you do that. But this steadies it down quite nicely. To get the shape, I'm just going to use again the same 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to go with a shape which is pretty much exactly the same as this one. And that's the first body complete, uh, except for just using a piece of this 400 grit emery cloth just to smooth things down a bit. So that's the body's all complete, except for the part where I have to just trim off these ends, which I'll do now with a craft knife. On these ones, I tend to leave, oh, I don't know, probably 15 millimeters, I suppose. Not totally critical. You're gonna be putting a float adapter on here. Just score through, break them off, and then just use the 80 grit sandpaper just to round the ends so nothing sticks. I'll finish these other two and then we get on to the antenna. As I explained right back in the beginning of this video, this is um, some fiberglass stem material which came from some broken pole floats. I've cut it off to be about 110 millimeters long and obviously I'm not going to be able to fit this in here like this because it's just too small and you'll remember back on the ones I made I've built that up to accommodate. And the way I've done that is to take a piece of paper which is 15 millimeters wide and if I can get this off there we go uh, and about 25 millimeters long. I've just used some super glue put a dab of it on the end and then held it in place while it dried. Be very careful that you don't glue your fingers together on this one. What I'm then going to do is take some PVA wood glue and just fold this around on itself like that and wait for it to dry and then after that I can either build it up or sand it down depending on what I need to do to make it fit. I'm going to use some uh, waterproof PVA wood glue, which I happen to have lying around from other projects. And I'm just going to spread it on liberally, allow it to soak in and also give it a bit of a, a whiz around. And then just twist everything up, as I explained before. A little bit messy, but not too bad. Try and keep everything going around nice and straight. And wipe off any excess. Bit of uh, folding in, make sure it's nicely together. And now we just have to wait for it to, to dry. Once it is dry, we can either sand it or we can paint it, depending on whether we have to build it up a little or take it down a little. I've had to wait a short time whilst the uh, PVA glue dried on this built-up area. And when I came to try it out on one of these floats I'd already made, I found that it's actually, it's an okay fit, but it's quite a stiff uh, fit. And I want a, a looser fit. So what I've done on the other one I've built is I've just taken the 80 grit sandpaper and just literally smoothed it down a little bit. So it's a sliding fit, not too sloppy, but sliding. And then I just, just smoothed it down a little bit more with the 400 grit emery cloth and that's just about good to go. So I'll do the same on this one and then we'll put the tips on. 
The tips of these floats are made from the 5mm um, balsa dowel and they're about 20mm long. I've just made a mark in the end there so I can get to a centre point. But all you need to do is using the table as a guide, gently push it in about halfway and then just twirl it around and see what happens. Now you can see that's slightly off. So you do get a bit of leeway on this. You can maneuver it around. There we go. That's pretty much it. Maybe a little bit more fine tuning, but uh, we'll just glue that on, shape it up, and then we're ready for painting. And here's the final antenna product. I glued the, the tip on using uh, the epoxy again, because that gives you time to maneuver it a little, get it nice and straight. If you use super glue, that tends to just go off and you're, you're stuck with whatever you've got. Then I just put it onto the float lathe and just shaped it up in exactly the same way as I showed you previously. So now we've got everything ready. We've got the floats, or the float bodies, and all I've done is I've taken three bits of the barbecue skewers and shoved them into the plastic inserts. It just makes it easier to, to paint them, because I'm going to use spray paint. I might as well do these, of course, at the same time. So this time I'm going to use this Dulux spray paint. Um, Duramax, semi-gloss enamel. Apparently it's good for wood, metal and plastic. Um, unfortunately, the stuff I used to use appears to have been discontinued. Uh, I did try on, on another project some really cheap spray paint, but uh, trust me, you probably want to buy this uh, more expensive stuff. It does actually go on better and doesn't drip anywhere near as much. Uh, those cheap paints really, really did uh, disappoint me. They were dripping everywhere. So I'm hoping this won't. It says it doesn't, so we'll see how we go with it. I've got my mask on, the room's well ventilated, and so let's start spraying. Good coating. And if it's as good as it says, we shouldn't get any drips. Obviously this stick is only there to hold it with, it'll be withdrawn eventually. And we'll get all of these done. It will get two coats, but I'm going to sand down lightly with the um, 400 grit emery cloth between coats. This one's obviously going to be difficult, but if you do the tip first on these things, because we're going to be sanding down anyway, it's really just to give it a layer. Okay. And now we'll just try not to get paint on me. Now we'll just have to leave it till we can come back and do the next coat. Good morning. Well, before close of play last night, I managed to get the first coat of black paint on the float bodies dry. I've uh, sanded them down with the 400 grit emery paper and I got a second coat of paint on it. And of course it's now morning, so everything's dry. I've done the same on the stems, or sorry, the antennas. So we're almost ready to um, put the final touches to this uh, project. Uh, but before we do, what I wanted to show you is, this is my standard float adapter. And, oops. and all you do is put it onto the bottom of the float body in the usual way and attach one of the antennas. And then what we can do, this is going to be the 4AA version, so I've got 4AAs on there. I did actually do this before I started by the way, but just to give you an idea, that makes it sit just like that, which is exactly where I wanted it. The 3AA version works just as well. The 2AA version, I must have taken just a fraction too much off. It's, it sits fine, it's just going to take a fraction less than 2AA. But literally, now I've done that, I'll dry these off, and all I need to do is to take a Sharpie marker and just write the shot loadings on in exactly the same way as I did with these ones, like that. Then. I can get a, a final spray coat of um, polyurethane varnish on it and we can get started on just finishing the, the painting of the tips so they end up looking like that. 
I'm just going to use some of this water-based lure paint, which I picked up at the tackle shop, um, and paint on the, the bands. Uh, as with the other ones over here, these are going to be exactly the same as this, one with a yellow top, one with a black top, to cope with different conditions. So I'm going to need to put a base coat of white down in 10 millimeter um, sections all the way down the antenna. So in the end, I put two coats of white on and two coats of yellow. And I just checked to make sure that these are a good fit. And in fact, one of them wasn't too great a fit. So I've just put another bit of black on there just to build it up a bit. So you've got a decent tight fit on there. So folks, that's pretty much all there is to uh, the antenna floats, which are designed for fishing on the uh, lift method. Uh, having said that, uh, as a bonus for you here, they are far more versatile than that. And for example, if you just take a piece of the, um, the cane, the barbecue um, skewers, and make yourself up an antenna, you've now got a nice slim insert float. float. Similarly, same piece of cane, but with this section here, which is the plastic internal from that uh, ballpoint pen, you've now got an insert, but with a thicker top, a bit more buoyancy. If you need to, let's say you're fishing somewhere really shallow and you want a shorter float, you can just put a shorter insert in and you can just make these up uh, and just keep them in your, in your tray. So I think in the fairly near future, I'm going to use one of these floats to show you how to fish the margins with a waggler and with a very small float. Because of course you don't want a great big long float when you're only fishing that much water. Anyway, that's it for another one folks. Hope you enjoyed it as always. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can do that too. And until the next time, bye for now.